Today we're bringing back a man that everyone wants to hear from. He has multiple degrees from MIT, including a PhD in biological engineering. He is also running for Senate in 2020. Welcome back, Dr. Shiva. It is great to see you today. Great to be here, Christine. Thank you. Okay, so first of all, I have to address this. Since our last discussion, which went viral, we're talking upwards of 8 million views on analytics. Uh, wow. Many people are thanking you for getting the truth out. Thousands are thanking you for getting the truth out there. But you've also been under uh, some pretty extreme attacks. People are angry. They're mentioning the email. They're mentioning the H1N1 swine flu death count. What do you have to say about all of this? Well, look, what we need to understand very clearly is that what we're witnessing right now is literally the convergence of the fake news media, big media, big scientific establishment, and big pharma all coming together because they know that a guy like me is not supposed to be speaking out against them. A guy like me is supposed to be a sellout like most of the academics and the biological scientists who all rely on funding from big pharma and Fauci. And literally what we're talking about is the fact that a guy like me who went to, who came from nothing, from working class neighborhoods in New Jersey, who actually invented the first email system when I converted the entire inner office mail system to the electronic form, called it email, Christina, and got the first U.S. copyright. I never spoke a lot about it until it went into the Smithsonian 33 years later after my mom died. She had saved all the beautiful artifacts. And when it went in, it was like a new skull was found in Africa. Now, up until then, I won every major award at MIT. I was on the front page for inventing wow. many things. But the invention of email goes against that narrative because it was done in Newark, New Jersey, outside of the scientific establishment. And what we're talking about is some really, really corrupt, stupid people in the fake news media who don't know anything about science. They've never worked really that hard, don't know anything about math or engineering. And these people think that they're going to attack me and attack the facts that email was invented by a 14-year-old American kid before MIT, outside of the military industrial complex. And in fact, e uh, TV was created by a 14-year-old boy in Franklin, Idaho. And the real issue here is where does innovation come from? Where does real solutions come from? Does it come from big pharma? Does it come from people like Anthony Fauci, who's part of the scientific establishment? Or does it come bottoms up? That's what we're talking about. What we're witnessing right here is the fact that we have been brainwashed by the military industrial academic complex to believe that they are the source of all truth, that they are the source of all health. When the, when the history of humankind shows that innovation science come from the outskirts. And after World War II, what we seen was a consolidation of the academic establishment with the Manhattan Project, with Sputnik, that a few set of people think that they're going to control science where they have a problem with someone like me because I got all the degrees. You know, I was nominated for the National Medal of Technology and Innovation. I am a Fulbright scholar. I have four degrees from MIT. You know, I'm known as a renowned scientist You know, I'm an author. So they have a problem because I'm not willing to be a good Indian and shake my head mm -hmm. and sit in the lotus position. That's a problem that they have. And this problem ain't going to go away for them. Exactly. You've been very outspoken, very vocal, which we all appreciate. I want to read you a tweet that you recently posted. I want to read this to our viewers, too. You said coronavirus fear mongering by the deep state will go down in history as one of the biggest frauds to manipulate economies, suppress dissent and push mandated medicine. Explain to us what you mean by that and tell us why you feel that way. Well, look, uh, first of all, the fundamental issue here is that when you look at the immune system of the body, the immune system of the body was designed over billions of years to take a hit and get more resilient. And so when I'm talking about using this coronavirus, using it as a vehicle to promote fear, so much fear that people have forgotten a fundamental issue here in science. It's a scientific fact that the people that will get attacked uh, or, or will, uh, will get harmed and uh, suffer injuries or fatalities is not because of the virus. We have 380 trillion viruses inside of us. You know, there's tons of viruses outside of us. We have 60 uh, trillion bacteria. We're a walking germ factory, Christina, all of us. We, we grew up in germs. We came out of germs. The reality is when you compromise the immune system, and we'll talk about AIDS, acquired immune deficiency syndrome, when you destroy the immune system with eating all sorts of horrible things, chemicals, 
Some of it can be genetic, but a lot of it is epigenetic. When you destroy the immune system, what you fundamentally do is you open your body that the body is not able to modulate its immune system. And what is the immune system? The immune system is a fundamental operating system of our body. And when you compromise that, you create a, a situation where a pathogen that your body overreacts. So think about it this way. You have two arms and two legs. Now imagine I tied two of your, and I handcuffed you, and I only gave you your two legs to fight with, where you're gonna, if an attacker comes to you, you're gonna go flail at them like crazy to protect yourself. Well, that's what happens when you destroy, let's say the innate and the adaptive, two, two parts of a very complex immune system. High sugar diets, you know what you do? You destroy your macrophages through gliotoxins. You destroy your, you destroy your, uh, you know, your T cells and the body overreacts because you've tied, you know, you've handcuffed itself with the cytokine storm. And it's not, so your own body goes and not only tries to take out the viral proteins, but it also goes, at, attacks parts of your body where those viral proteins tend to go to. In the case of coronavirus, to the epithelial cells. That's what's going on. The reality is that when I put out that tweet, I was looking at this as a scientist. I was saying this is extraordinary because the reality is that th that fear mongering is intended to destroy the economy, which is what we've seen. 17 million people now have filed unemployment claims. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen it uh, as a vehicle to destroy dissent, right? We had, if you go look all over the world prior to this, people have forgotten very quickly. Mm -hmm. There was protests in Hong Kong, protests in Wuhan six months ago protests in 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 uh in France we had two very popular populist leaders get elected three Boris Johnson right you had Narendra Modi get reelected and Donald Trump there's a massive anti-establishment movement taking place across the world and it's against the forces of people like Bill Gates people like Zuckerberg people like Hillary Clinton people like the WHO CDC and the Chinese Communist Party people who think that they know better than you and I the reason my parents left India was there was a thing called the caste system, where there were a small set of people thinking they knew better and all of us were nothing. And those people have not gone away. And they're not going to stop uh, truth or freedom or health as long as I'm around, because I was fortunately educated by their system. I know how they operate. I know all their weaknesses. And one of the things I've learned is that the consolidation of the scientific establishment, the consolidation of big pharma is creating a fascist environment in this world. And there's, there's no other path that we have but to fight for our freedom. And that comes with going back to truth. And the truth is that email was invented by a 14-year-old kid. The truth is that the immune system is not so weak. And the truth is that health emerges decentralized. It's not going to be Chinese Communist Party top down, a bunch of people telling you and I what vaccines we should take. Health comes when you have a relationship with your healthcare practitioner. And out of that emerges health. That's where health comes from, because one size does not fit all. Your body, Christina, is different than my body. The nutrients you need are different than mine. That's what I learned growing up in India from my grandmother, right medicine for the right person at the right time. Yeah. And in fact, that is what the modern science of systems biology shows. Francis Collins at the NIH know this, but he chooses not to experience this because he and Fauci are all part of big pharma. They are basically agents of big pharma. And the fire Fauci campaign is not just about him, but it's to send a signal that we must take back science because science was supposed to be a noble, a noble service to humanity to expose the truth. And this guy isn't. He's a, literally Emperor Fauci. And it's time that he leaves or he be fired. And it's time that Donald Trump realized that he should not let a gun be put to his head because these guys will come again six months from now. And at that time, they'll say, you know what? You want the economy to shut down? We better mandate vaccines. Let's give everyone immunity cards. That's where this is headed. And the fact that we've even got, gotten to the state shows that we must rise up right now. And the fake news media, which dare attack the fact that I invented email, which dare, in fact, in fact, diminish all the hard work I did as an American working class kid earning my degrees. I didn't like Elizabeth Warren lie to get into Harvard. I actually earned everything I had. So, you know, to hell with them. Okay. All right, we are going to touch on the Dr. Fauci petition, the fire Dr. Fauci petition a little bit later in the show. Uh, but first I wanna talk on what you just mentioned, the fake news media. You've seen the coronavirus briefings. Nearly all of the reporters are so focused on attacking President Donald Trump. In addition, all the mainstream media headlines, right? They push fear and doom and gloom. I wanna put up another social media post that you posted out. It says the fake news colludes with fake science to create fake problems, fake solutions, 
fake history to drive us into slavery and fascism. You just talked about this a little bit, but why is the mainstream media so advantageous in pushing the coronavirus agenda? V very, very simple. You have to understand that the entire publishing industry, the entire medical establishment industry, the entire big pharma industry, they all hang out in the same circles, Christina. They're one. And the reason is they cannot, they do not want any attacks on them. I'm attacking the fake news media. I'm attacking the, the scientific establishment and they will stick together. And that's why it's time that we, the people rise up and recognize these people aren't disparate ent entities. They communicate together. They must disparage people who talk about real science. They must disparage truth because everything they do is based on lies. It's based on this top-down model. If anything, they want to bring made in China to America. Mm -hmm. They want to export China everywhere. That's what this is about. And fundamentally, the fake news media is made up of people who owe money, they own, they owe service to big pharma, big vaccines, and that's what they're about. They all hang out in the same circles. Come on. Jeffrey Epstein was probably among them. Weinstein was all part of them. The president of MIT took money from Jeffrey Epstein after he knew he was convicted. Same did the president of Harvard. So we're talking about is a set of people who are one small family, and they believe that they're going to control our lives. It wasn't sufficient that they lost the Revolutionary War and they had to you know, go back to England or whatever. They lost their monarchies. These people fundamentally think they know better. And that's what Bill Gates is about. And that's what Hillary Clinton is about. Both of them. And you have to understand, we also have to be aware of the not so obvious establishment, like people like Bobby Kennedy, who on the one hand attacks uh, Bill Gates, but he doesn't say anything about Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so we have to understand who our leaders are going to be. Are they going to be top down people? Or are they going to be bottoms up people like myself and you and others? Mm -hmm. We need a bottoms up movement. No more Kennedys, no more Gateses, no more Bernie Sanders who sell out people. It's about a bottoms up revolutionary movement that we need to win. And we're talking about freedom versus slavery. That's what this is about. Yeah, and you just mentioned Bill Gates, right? You have said that the coronavirus was a well-executed plan by Bill Gates. Today, Gates slammed President Trump for suspending funding to the WHO. He said that the world needs, this is what Bill Gates said, the WHO now more than ever. This is in response to President Trump suspending that funding. He also said no one can replace the WHO in slowing the spread of the coronavirus. And this is as dangerous as it sounds. Those are quotes from Bill Gates. What are your thoughts on this? Well, look, you just need to understand that Bill Gates uh, is a fake innovator. He didn't build DOS. His mama and papa helped him find it from someone else and sell it. His entire career has been based on the inside. He knows nothing about biological sciences. What he thinks, he's trying to create a legacy where he literally took money that was tax dollars and put it into a foundation, and he thinks top down, him, him and his wife are going to tell us what to do. Bill Gates, fundamentally, he's part, he created Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance. Him and Hillary Clinton worked on that together. The WHO is part of that. And if you look at the WHO's SDG3 goals, Sustainable Development Goals, it's to create this fake utopia and say that the way we're going to get to that utopia, a land of no poverty, income inequality, all this stuff, top-down model, is going to come from vaccinating everyone, the IA2030 report. And he's a critical element of it. He's a neo-missionary. He thinks he's going to help all the dark people of the world by him coming and swooping in and giving everyone GMOs and vaccines. This guy is a criminal, just like Fauci. They all work together. And by the way, I believe Fauci sits on his board, on his leadership council. So all these people need to talk about all the incestuous things that they do. And fundamentally, if they cared about public health, really cared about it, let's talk about why we have such high levels of obesity in the United States. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about why we have medical errors. Let's talk about why we have 1.9 million hospitalizations from pharmaceuticals. Let's talk about those adverse reactions. They don't give a damn about public health. What they care about is power, profit, and control. If they cared about public health, we would be talking about vitamin D, vitamin A, and all of these guys at Bill Gates would be saying, oh my God, let's give those people on crisis who, who are about to be put on ventilators a death sentence, why don't we give them high dose vitamin C? Mm -hmm. He's not talking about that because they don't want vitamins to compete with vaccines. They don't want vitamins to compete with ventilators. That's what this is about. And it's time we destroy the medical establishment. They do not serve humanity. They serve themselves. And MDs listening out there, you guys are hostages. You know it. You guys get abused every day. You guys have Stockholm syndrome. And many MDs, a lot of wonderful people, went into medicine to, with the noble service. But you know what? They got golden handcuffs. And now they actually don't have that many golden handcuffs. 
they're realizing with the coronavirus, they're actually being made no different than the frontline medical workers who get treated like dirt. Mm -hmm. So it's time that people recognize these people don't give a damn about public health because if, if they did, we would have clean air, clean water, clean food. The United States has a D plus in infrastructure. Massachusetts is an F minus minus in infrastructure. We have one unit party here. The mass GOP establishment does not want me there. They work together with the Democratic Party. Massachusetts got an F minus minus, Christina, in infrastructure. Wow, wow. Horrible roads, horrible bridges, horrible water systems. And they got a D plus in corruption, the worst in corruption. That's what MIT and Harvard have delivered, which are the centers of the deep state. And that's why my winning the U.S. Senate seat, it's not about me. It's for every working person that we're going to take back freedom. We're going to take back truth. We're going to take back health, which is what our campaign is about at Shiva for Senate. You know, that's what we built. And bottoms up, our movement is building people, not only uh, everyday working people. We have so many mothers who are coming out because they don't want their kids to be forced vaccine mandated. They want to have choice. Right. That's, That's right. what our movement is bringing up. Well, and I want to talk about that movement and how people can get involved with it a little bit later in the show. But first, I want to show you this uh, headline from The New York Times. It was just published. It says in big letters, New York City death toll soars past 10,000 in revised coronavirus count. And then a little bit lower in smaller letters, it says the city has added more than 3,700 additional people who were presumed to have died of the coronavirus but had never tested positive. Okay, so the number one question that I'm hearing from people who are flooding me with emails and calls is why are they attributing all deaths to coronavirus? Now, we touched on the codes a little bit in our last discussion, but people want to know why would the doctors, these medical doctors that they trust, the health departments that they trust, why would they do this? Yeah, it's a great question. Look, you know, this is, if you look at the entire health establishment, if you look at the entire health care system, remember it's top down. Uh, in, in, in 2000, there was a Safe Harbor Act around that period which got passed, you know, plus or minus some years, which really allowed GPOs and PBMs to give kickbacks to hospital administrators. Who were GPOs and PBMs? People should go research them. Group purchasing or organizations and PBMs on the pharmaceutical side into pharmacies. These are middlemen, Christina. The middlemen really crank up the cost of every hospital supply that goes into a hospital. They mark it up by five, 10, 10,000 times. They are motivated to always put everything into a code and everything to go through their supply chain. So you have massive corruption in the healthcare system. Mm -hmm. The Safe Harbor Act needs to be reversed. So fundamentally, what you have ha happening is there is an incentive to brand people COVID-19. There is an incentive to put more people on, 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 on these ventilators. But one of the critical things we need to understand is that one of the data that people need to also see that I've seen is that the numbers, you know, we're still in the flu season has gone down concomitantly as these numbers have gone up. Mm -hmm. And as you know, there's enough reports out there, people can listen to others, that there's an incentive for people to brand people as COVID-19. And moreover, they're using a, a PCR, you know, the a DNA a polymerase chase, uh, chain reaction experiment, which is highly, highly dubious. Even the guy you created said it's a qualitative test. It's not even a definitive test. So you have cooking of the books, Remember, the WHO, Ted Rosa's group, is the one who created the two codes, mm -hmm. the COV, COVID positive, and then they created another code, which said, well, sort of looks like and feels like COVID-19. So they're putting everyone into that because New York, let's be honest, you have Andrew Cuomo there. Andrew Cuomo really doesn't care for President Trump. The other piece you have there is you have a high preponderance, you know, in Houston, for example, high preponderance of you know, African-Americans are getting this. And it's not because they're black. It's because the black community historically has been abused by the Democratic Party and the establishment because they were never given infrastructure. They, their health is, is ruined in many, many ways. They preponderance have a high level of more immunocompromised people than everyday white people. Mm -hmm. and, but this has happened by organization. So let, if we want to really talk about those 10,000 numbers, why don't the hospitals release I want to see, they don't have to give the people's names, their medical histories. What were their pre-existing mm -hmm. conditions? How old were they? Let's talk about diabetes and high blood pressure. Let them do that. Let's put it up on the cloud so we can all see it. We have that data. Let Andrew Cuomo do that. But he's not going to do that because this entire crisis about saying this virus is going to kill all of us and, and destroy all of us is really a pretext for mandated vaccines, mm -hmm. for mandated bottoms, a top-down medicine. That's what it's about.
That's what this entire thing is about because big pharma is losing. If you look at their business model, Christina, they're not making any money through their traditional pharmaceutical drugs. People are starting to, you know, look at vitamins. People want to mm -hmm. eat better. So pharmaceutical drug manufacturing, their entire business model is blowing up in front of them. Literally, because you can sue a pharmaceutical drug company. It's $5 billion to make a drug. It's high cost. Look at what happened to Sanofi. Mm -hmm. They Diabetes drug, their cardiovascular drugs are losing money. Mm -hmm. So they need a new territory. Well, you know what that is? It's vaccines. Why? No liability at all. Mm -hmm. Ted Kennedy, you know, forced through a, a law which basically created the vaccine courts. You and I, if your children get hurt, we can't sue the vaccine manufacturers. We can pharma, but we can't them. So lower risk, no liability, and high profit. That's what Bill Gates, that's what Chan Zuckerberg, and that's what the corrupt Hillary Clinton want. They want to be part of this clique who they all hang around, they all go to the same parties. This is an aristocratic clique. That's what we're talking about. And they don't give a damn about you and I. They don't give a damn about public health. Nothing. Because if they did, why would they let Monsanto and these companies destroy the soil of Africa and India and most of the countries on the planet and destroy American people's health? That's what they've done. That's why 54% of the kids in America have autoimmune disorders. One out of five kids has a mental, men, some type of mental disorder. That's what they've delivered us. What Anthony Fauci has delivered us? In the Western world, we have a, we have a country with the highest infant mortality rate and the lowest longevity rate. How dare that he stand up there and talk about public health? He knows nothing about public health. Well, let's talk about Fauci. You mentioned it not too long ago in the discussion, that petition that you started, Fire Fauci. It has more than 70,000 signatures at this point in time. 75,000. More, yeah. 75 now? More than yeah. 3,000 of those are from medical doctors. You've been very vocal. You've been very brave when talking about Fauci. You continue to do it today, yet still people are saying that we need to listen to the experts. We need to listen to Dr. Fauci. He is the expert. Uh, what is your response to the number of terms of why we shouldn't listen to Fauci and the so-called experts who have been wrong on every single model they've put out there on the coronavirus? Well, if Mr. Fauci is an expert, let him explain the deterioration of health in this country. Why is it obesity rates in Greece? Why is, why is the FDA... Why is the FDA, let him talk about this, why is the FDA saying that jams and jellies have to have 40% sugar in it to be characterized as jams and jellies? Let him talk about why we have seen massive amounts of you know, hospital debts that 440,000. Let him talk about what drugs do, what the adverse reactions they cause. But he won't talk about that because this guy is not an expert. What he is, he's a bureaucrat. He represents where, where academia has gone, where the scientific establishment has gone. It, it supports and it encourages and it creates bureaucrats like him, little fascists. That's what it creates. And he's able to manipulate presidents because many of them do not understand science. Many of them did not learn math and engineering anymore. Remember, when the founders of this country, Washington actually knew what sine and cosine meant. He was a surveyor. You know, Jefferson built beautiful buildings. And... Franklin actually knew engineering, but our presidents and our politicians know jack about any of this. 70% are lawyer lobbyists. That's why a guy like him is able to bamboozle people. Mm -hmm. He's the one who convinced everyone that HIV creates AIDS. And we, I'll debate anyone. Mm -hmm. You know what you should do, Christina? Call every one of those scientists. They can bring all of them, and it'll be me and perhaps Peter Duisberg will join me. <laughs> and we can take every one of them on, and we can show them that the lie that they created to create the AIDS industry, mm -hmm. and that's what they're trying to do. They have an idiot like Lady Gaga, who's now supporting Gavi, okay? They, and, and, and you know, in, when I was out in Hollywood, they used to call him star, you know, you can put the word F, whatever, okay? That's what these people are. They work with the, you know, the prostitution model of Hollywood, with the prostitution model of academia, and that's who works together. It's not about science. It's, in fact, there's some great actors, very few of them left in Hollywood, but they diminish them. It's about celebrityhood. It's about academia. It's not about science or craft anymore. So what Fauci represents is he rep represents the utmost of corruption. That's what he represents. He represents a guy who's wheedled his way through by lying and creating fake science. And he thinks he's going to get away with it. Well, I challenge him to any debate to prove to me why he thinks that this virus and another virus, the next one that's coming along, is going to damage the immune system. And what is he going to do about boosting people's immune system? Why doesn't he talk about vitamin D? Has he ever heard of cathelicidins? Maybe he hasn't. Why doesn't he talk about vitamin A and cytokeratins? Why doesn't he talk about vitamin C? 
Why doesn't he talk about the you know GAPVH receptors? Let's talk to them, or, or those molecules that get created in in the cytokine storm. Let's have a scientific discussion. He and I open and we public. can do that we can this will be a public invite to talk to fauci to come onto this show and debate you on these issues we will host both of you here i know our viewers will be highly interested in that some of our viewers a lot of our viewers a lot of people out there have actually grown tired of this uh things have been happening over the last week protests in ohio north carolina vancouver berlin uh today there's protesters in michigan i've seen the word revolution popping up everywhere People are tired. They want to reopen the economy. They're not buying into the virus fear yet. Experts keep pushing social distancing. Fauci just said that when the country eventually reopens, we're not going to have fans in the stands at major sporting events. Then Bill Gates, which you touched on a little bit earlier, he said this recently on the Ellen DeGeneres show. Take a listen. And then, you know, with luck uh, in early June, if the whole country does a better job of shutting down and we get uh, prioritization of the testing that's going on, what policies should we have? Because until we get almost everybody vaccinated uh, globally, we still won't be fully back to normal. Okay, Dr. Shiva, you just talked about this, about the global vaccinations that they want to have, vaccinations that they want to have mandated, uh, then the social distancing. How dangerous will this be if the social distancing lasts in Fauci's terms, he wants it to last forever, uh, to our country, our people, and then saying that we're going to have to shut down until global vaccinations happen. Well, look, you know what Bill Gates should do? Why doesn't he shut down everything he does? Why doesn't he take all his money and devolve it out to people who are suffering right now? Why doesn't he do that? Let him put his money where his mouth is, because if he believes that we should shut it down, why doesn't he shut down the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation? Mm -hmm, why doesn't mm -hmm. he take all of his money and do that? Let him talk about that. But, it, but he won't, because he doesn't give a damn about the American working people. He doesn't give a damn about crashing this economy, because that's part of the goal. The part of the deep state goal is to force the government, force Trump, force the economic policy people to backfill in. And by the way, this comes from a senior person who called me up. I can't tell his name, but a senior economist very close to the White House said, Shiva, Fauci is destroying the economy. Please keep doing your videos. All right? Wow. Exactly. This is Why do you think I've been doing my videos? Because he said, Shiva, we are being told to backfill in economic policy by health policy leading it. That's why this came from somewhere, which I can't talk about. So I'm doing this as a noble service, putting myself out there, because the bottom line is the economists are being told to print money to print money, six trillion has been printed to save this country. The reality is what it's doing is it's gonna be the biggest transfer of wealth to again, more elite people. China will take a lot of those reserve dollars and as its economy tanks, they'll buy more US assets like they did AMC theaters, et cetera. Yes. But this is entirely a model. Bill Gates, let's find out where all his homes are. Let's understand how much land his foundation has brought, perhaps in Africa, this mm -hmm. entire model is about a global set of elites like this guy who knows nothing about the biological sciences, didn't grow up in working class neighborhoods, doesn't understand what it means to be a working person, him thinking he knows better. And I'll challenge him too. Let he and I have a conversation about the immune system. Let him come here and defend himself. Let's talk science. Let's not talk nonsense. Let's talk science. Bill Gates and Fauci, Francis Collins, I'll take all three of them on. And they won't be able to defend themselves because the fundamental issue is the truth will come out that what they're really about is promoting an agenda. It's about propaganda. It's about fear-mongering people. And it's about fear-mongering, particularly the vulnerable educated elites. Mm -hmm. Because you know what the good news is though? The plumber, the electrician, working people who actually work with their hands know this is all BS. Mm -hmm. And that's why they're gonna uprise and maybe we should have a good revolution in this country. Maybe it's about time that we put an end to this hegemony of a small set of people and by the way, most of those people, the epicenter of them is between the one mile radius between MIT and Harvard. Mm. The epicenter of the deep state is right over there. And I know where it is and I've known it since I came here in 1981. Fortunately, I've learned all of how they operate and I know all their weaknesses and it's time that that establishment be smashed because they do not serve the interests of working people at all. They and serve the interests of people like Weinstein and Epstein. Mm -hmm. In it fact, they gave him parties and they supported him. They took his money. And you're doing a great job here calling them out. Uh, final question here. After our last discussion, a lot of our viewers had questions about your statement that HIV does not cause aid. Can you explain that statement to our viewers? Sure. Maybe clarify yeah, it? Yeah, very, very important people understand this, okay? Uh, 
tens of millions of people, 60, you know, you can look at the percentage. I haven't looked at it. A large proportion of people in Zambia, for example, have a HIV. HIV is a virus, okay? It's, it, it's, it's it, you know, it, it's, it, it's not like a small little virus. It appears in many, many bodies. Lots of Africans have it. We don't have epidemics of people dying. The reality is, getting back to this point, if you go look at it, Peter Duisberg, everyone should look at Peter's work. Peter was one of the earliest members to the National Academy of Science. I think if not, not, not the youngest. He was one of the earliest tenured professors at Berkeley. Peter was an eminent, eminent guy. He was a discoverer of the oncogene. When the AIDS, when the HIV AIDS causality, remember, these guys are always trying to tie some little microbe. It's like a district attorney always trying to find some criminal, okay? Trying to associate always a virus or a bacteria with a crime, right? In this case, AIDS. Well, what is AIDS? AIDS is acquired immune deficiency syndrome. It's when your T cell count in your body goes below a certain level. Well, when you look at the first set of AIDS cases that came in, Peter Duisberg and others were the first to point this out. Well, it turns out a preponderance of them, you know, 80, 90% of them were gays who were taking amyl nitrates. And remember, it was a time in American history where there was lots and lots of drugs, people partying all night. You know, one gay guy may, would have maybe 1,500 lovers. Okay, and this is not politically incorrect. It was a fact. Lots of partying, people were compromising their immune system. Amyl nitrates, nearly 200 papers written showing how it compromises the immune system. The second group of people who were getting blood transfusions, well, it's not the blood, it's a fact that they were getting immunosuppressive drugs. And the third group of people were, you know, heavy IV drug users, okay? Those three groups of people destroy their immune systems. Well, they go find this virus, HIV. By the way, many of those people had many other viruses. And the CDC, at that time at least, even now, doesn't, creep, doesn't keep great data. So they associated, oh, this virus goes with this. And Robert Gallo, the guy who did enormous amount of scientific misconduct at the time, and people can go look at his name, he created the HIV test. He's the one who stole data from the French. And guess who came to his rescue? Fauci. Fauci came to his rescue. Gallo went into the back end, and then Fauci came up on the forefront promoting the HIV causality with AIDS. Again, let's debate this. Let's call all the scientists together. Let's have a discussion about does HIV cause AIDS? There is a, there's a set of postulates called Koch's postulates, K-O-C-H-S. What is Koch's postulates? Koch's postulates was, was designed around the time of the, by Robert Koch at the time of the germ theory. And Koch's postulates basically say that in order to say that this virus or this bacteria causes this disease, Christina, you have to show at least four things. One, you have to find an abundance, not a little bit, but an abundance of that virus in the host where the disease is, okay? Step one. Step two, you have to be able to culture that virus in a Petri dish. And then third, you have to inject it into another, let's say animal, and it should get the exact same symptoms as the other one, mm -hmm. as the original. And then you should be able to culture it back. Well, they haven't been able to do this with the HIV AIDS stuff. Mm -hmm. And in fact, if you look at many of these diseases, they haven't been able to do it. They try, it's, it's called virus hunters. After polio, <clears throat> after the big polio vaccine came, right and went, all these virus hunters were looking for a new job. And then what they did, they said, oh, viruses also cause cancer, retro, retroviruses. And the, the leader, one of the founders of that was Peter Duisberg, Oncogenes. He's a guy who discovered a retrovirus, but he even said, this is nonsense, okay? So what you have is you have virus hunters, bacteria hunters, like district attorneys who want to pin every crime on somebody even though they may not have done that crime. And wow. that's wow. what big pharma, big vaccines want to do. So it's fear-based medicine. And it ignores the fact, completely ignores the fact we're surrounded by viruses. We're surrounded by viruses. I mean, I'm getting emails from people saying, hey, I haven't seen my boyfriend in two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. I have a very, very close friend of mine. His wife just went into major depression, 40 years. You know why? She can't go out with her friends. She can't uh, play, you know, her bridge game. She's in severe depression. It's awful. And you know what really hurts people? You know what hurts people's immune system more than a freaking virus? It's social isolation. And that's been a lot of work. 1988 landmark study, a famous paper written showing that when you socially isolate people, you destroy their immune systems. You lower their antiviral activity, increase inflammatory compounds. Mm -hmm. So let me just repeat, 
with all due respect to all of these people, they may be nice people, they all have families, but they don't give a damn about public health. Mm -hmm. They've sold out to the devil, and that devil is big pharma. That devil is top-down uh, establishment model of how the world should exist. China, right? Mm -hmm. China believes mm -hmm. that the enlightened few will run their whole country mm -hmm. like a factory. This is why in China, the everyday people in China were, have been running huge protests under threat of life against pollution. Well, why is China so polluted? Because the Paris Accords, based on fake science, that CO2 is a pollutant, allows China to pollute. Let me repeat, to all you liberals listening out there who care about, you know, all your little nice gardens and meditating in New Age, which, you know, I like meditating, but you know what? The Paris Accords has nothing to do with lowering pollution. It encourages China, which pollutes 11 billion carbon metric tons, to go up to 22 billion. That's not healthy. Mm -mm. And people yeah. in China have been fighting for their health. They've been out on the streets protesting, in, including in Wuhan. They had fights with police. And that was six months before. And now we don't hear anything about Wuhan. We don't hear anything about Hong Kong. So everyone, you're listening. You know what? Truth is going to win here, and people need to start using their common sense. We wouldn't be here, 7.2 billion people. I don't care if it's bioweapons or this. Our body has a very strong immune mm -hmm. system. Feed it. Vitamin D, vitamin A, vitamin C. And you know what? Above all of that, connections with people, love, understanding, fellowship, laughter. This is why the number one source that people live long, people who smoke, a little bit overweight, the number one reason, because they had social connections, mm -hmm. social relationships. Number two was they did some type of exercise. Number three was they all drank a local fermented drink. And those local fermented drinks support the microbiome which is your gut bacteria, which is very important for immune health. Okay, one last thing here. Uh, I gotta get this in quickly. How can people support you in your run for Senate? Everyone listening out there, our, our run for US Senate in Massachusetts is gonna be one of the most important elections for the world. It's because one of you is running, me, okay, mm -hmm. for you. And what I mean by that, if you go to shivaforsenate.com and you go to our website, you'll see it says Truth, Freedom, Help. And it says revolution, a revolution for truth, freedom, and health. And it's saying that without freedom, we don't have truth. Without truth, we don't get health. And without health, we don't get freedom. Mm -hmm. Freedom to debate, discuss. That's why I'm inviting these guys to have a discourse. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about science, because with real science, we'll get to truth. And with real truth, we'll find real solutions for our body. And that's when we build strong system. That's what our campaign's about. Everyone should go there, click on that donate button. But when you click on that donate button, you're not donating to me. I'm gonna give you something. I'm gonna give you a book. I'm gonna give you your body, your system, a tool that'll teach you how your body's a system. And we had it, I think, priced up there for like for 25 bucks. If people can't afford that, give five or 10. And if you can't afford that, write to me, vashiva at vashiva.com, V as in Victor, A Shiva, and tell me what your economic situation, and we'll make, give you a full scholarship. But that's what our campaign is about. And if people scroll down, Christina, we must get on the ballot. The establishment, GOP establishment, which is one, Charlie Baker, who's a Republican, is running, three lawyers. He's got another lawyer he threw in, so I wouldn't get the GOP nomination. And then I'm running against two other lawyers, Joe Kennedy and Ed Malarkey, okay? So it's a working class guy who actually creates against three doofuses, three lawyers by the establishment. So people go to Shiva for Senate and they scroll down, you will see a thing that says, get Shiva on the ballot, click on that and fill in your name and we will send you out nomination papers. You gotta get this out to everyone, Christina, we'll send you out those nomination papers Fill them out. You have to be in Massachusetts. So everyone listening, if you know someone in Massachusetts, call them up right now. Tell them, hey, go to Shiva for Senate, mm -hmm. scroll down, fill out that ballot, and we'll send you out the nomination papers. We need probably another five to 7,000 more signatures. Our amazing volunteers were on the ground collecting, Christina. Now the governor has sent out police to stop us, mm. even though we're not violating any rules. That's the fascism that's taking place. But we need everyone to watch and support this campaign because it is your campaign. We need to take back this country, for that matter, the world from those people who think they know better than you and I. We don't, you know, we need, to, because they think they're running the new kingdoms. And it's time we deliver them a massive, massive defeat. And my winning here will be our winning, shivaforsenate.com. All right, well, thank you so very much, Dr. Shiva, for all of your insight today. It was great to see you again point here uh, because you posted something last week that I reported on